Hi everyone, so let's move on to the next few paragraphs of the essay, The Meaning of Art by Herbert Reader. So in the last video, we learned the summary of the first seven paragraphs. Now let me just give you a quick review of it. So Adim Herbert Reed, art in a defined way. How did he define art? Art as beautiful. So art beautiful is a structure. Alle, pakshe, Greek artist, Greek and European artist, if you say art beautiful, it is perfect. That is perfectionism. We have a few examples. Ipam, Apollo Belvedere in the sculpture, Aphrodite of Milos in the sculpture. These two sculptures are a human figure. Alle, or or human ne, so, that is realistic. There is a perfectionism in it. That is a beautiful form of art. In the art forms are beautiful. For example, Byzantine Madonna, uh, the idol from New Guinea. That is not beautiful. Because they are abstract forms of human figure. They are just a symbolic representation. If Byzantine Madonna is a virgin, she is a virgin, she is a virgin, she is a virgin. We don't know how Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ look like, but we uh, don't know how to do human figure. It is just an abstract form, it is a symbolic representation. That's why we are ugly. Herbert Reed bar He affirms that certain art forms are ugly. But later, Herbert Reed bar in this art in a curriculum beautiful and no ugly and no param patella. Karnam or art in a describe and either, I think your art in a number analyze and either beautiful and the reedy lella. Pagram enganana art must be defined as intuition. One art genic in other, one artist in the manacil naturally wherein a chale emotions, feelings, and experiences ludeana. Adan art is defined as intuition. Upon your theory, Kondo another Benedetto Croce in the Parano Italian philosopher ana. Upon your Italian philosopher Benedetto Croce Parana, that art must be defined as intuition and not as beautiful. And this theory is called as the theory of aesthetics. So Herbert Reed in the opinion le, or art beautiful ayirikkanam engil adin endu undayirikkanam or form undayirikkanam or structure undayirikkanam and then he says that visual arts ipo drawings paintings films photographs sculptures idokke eduthu kazhinja idine adeham endana vilichathu starting le thanne adeham idin visual arts ne ellam plastic arts na vilikkunnathu adine jeevan illatha art forms aanu nanu parayunnathu so lively aitola art form vena nammal create cheyana ipo or architect buildings create cheyunu or painter paintings create cheyunu pakshe idellam endana idellam lifeless aanu kaaranam idella or imitation aanu adil onnum thanne pudume ennu parayanilla sadharana logathil kaanuna chala kaalchagal angane thanne pagarthi ezhuthi vechi pagarthi varchu vechirikkana ee paintings lella Okay, if you have a tree, you can see it. That's why you have a tree. That's why you have a lifeless and plastic art. That's why you have a lot of philosophers. Schopenhauer is a lot of art and music. This is an artwork. It must be creative. It must be freely created. It must be unique and not an imitation. It is a lot of art. That is unique, creative. Okay. In the Herbert Reed, the first paragraph is that this Greek artist is a perfectionist. If you are perfect, you are beautiful. But Herbert Reed is that it is not necessary that an art must be perfect. We have to follow the concept of the art. We are free to create art. This is what we call Herbert Reed. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. That is the 8th paragraph. And it is art. It is on art and aesthetics. So in this paragraph, in the 8th paragraph, 
Herbert Reed he describes about the artistic process or the artistic activity that is delved in creating an artwork. How does an art how does an artist he creates an artistic work? So in an artistic process there are three stages. The first stage is the perception of sounds, gestures and physical actions and the second stage is the arrangement of these perceptions into meaningful shapes and patterns and the third stage is the expression of previously existing emotions. Now this is how Herbert Reed has described the three stages that are involved in an artistic activity. Now let me explain it to you much more easily. Now if you take the poem Daffodils by William Wordsworth, what was the artistic process that was involved in creating that poem which is an artwork right so the first stage that was involved was the perception of that image of daffodils so he visually perceived or he saw a field of daffodils so here William Wordsworth he saw this field of daffodils so that's the first stage the perception of that image and in the second stage William Wordsworth after seeing this field of daffodils he goes back home he lies on his couch now a couch is nothing but a sofa so he lies on this couch and he is thinking about these daffodils he's thinking about daffodils He's thinking about what he saw in the field, in, in, in that field of daffodils. Now he is not doing any sort of study. He is just casually relaxing on his couch. And he is thinking about these daffodils. And he thinks about how these daffodils move in the wind. And it just shows a, sort of like a dance. You know, he's just thinking like that the uh, daffodils are dancing in the wind. They are dancing in the air. That shows the joy. It, it, it sort of creates a joy in his mind. You know, uh, it, it creates a happiness in his mind. So he feels happy thinking about how the daffodils are moving in the air, how they are dancing in the air. So he's casually thinking about it. These are just casual thoughts that he has in his mind. It is no intellectual activity that is taking place. Very casually he is thinking about them. Now he has thoughts, ideas and emotions related to these daffodils and he and he is trying to arrange his ideas in the form of a poem. So the form or the structure that he adopts is that of a poem. So he wants to express his emotions, feelings and ideas about these daffodils in the form of a poem so the third stage is expression he writes about these daffodils in the form of a poem on a paper that is the third stage so the first stage is he perceives a field of daffodils he sees a field of daffodils so the first stage one is perception stage two is he's thinking about these daffodils and arranging his thoughts okay in the form of a poem He's planning like I'll write about these daffodils in the form of a poem. I'll write a poem on daffodils. So arrangement of his perception is the second stage and the third stage is expression. So Adhyam William Wordsworth daffodils in the Parana Kavada Yudumbo Adhyam Adeham daffodils in the Parana field gandu Adeham daffodils in a kandu. Rendamata stage Adeham Vitla Poeta. Adehatinda sofail valare casually relax the kadan adehemi daffodils in a kurcha chindikiana. But daffodils in a kurcha chindikim ba deham daffodils in a padiki and la chinada. Ali buko kitorna chitta uh, daffodils in the parana flower and the endo and a the family in lana the belonging in the alingi adinda color and dani yellow. Angene adine study jewella. Pagarenda and valare casually relax say that adeham daffodils in a kurcha chindikiana chinada. In the tadem chindikiana. In ki daffodils in a carnumbo, I mean, Wordsworth in a daffodils in a carnumbo, are they hath in endavana emotions, feelings, and thoughts? Are they hamadenda chain of the very poet in the rubatil, edida mendi, plangiana? But are they ham kanda karingal? Are they hamuru poet in 
ഡോക്യുമെന്റ് രൂപത്തിൽ അറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഒരു പ്ലാനിങ് ആണ് സെക്കൻഡ് സ്റ്റേജ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എന്നിട്ട് മൂന്നാമത്തെ സ്റ്റേജിൽ അദ്ദേഹം അത് എക്സ്പ്രസ് ചെയ്യാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ മനസ്സിലുള്ള തോട്ട്സിനെ അദ്ദേഹം ഒരു പോയത്തിന്റെ രൂപത്തിൽ എഴുതി വെക്കുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റിക് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ദാറ്റ് ഹി ഡിസ്കസ് ഇസ് ഇൻ ദി എയ്ത്ത് പാരഗ്രാഫ് ന മൂവിംഗ് ഓൺ ടു ദി നയൻത്ത് പാരഗ്രാഫ് ഇൻ ദി നയൻത്ത് പാരഗ്രാഫ് ഹി ഡിസ്കസ് ഇസ് അബൌട്ട് ഫോം ആൻഡ് എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ന വെൻ യു ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് ഫോം ആൻഡ് എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ സി ഞാൻ ഇത് സിമ്പിൾ ആയിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞുതരാം ഐ എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ഇറ്റ് യു ഇൻ ദ മോസ്റ്റ് സിംപ്ലസ്റ്റ് വേ ഇൻ ദിസ് പാരഗ്രാഫ് he talks about expression what is expression see just like how wordsworth saw the daffodils and he wanted to express about express his thoughts emotions and feelings about these daffodils into a poem right he wanted to express about it now what is the reason that he wanted to express about these daffodils it was a very intuitive feeling it was something that naturally occurred to him one day morning he sees a field of daffodils and the next moment he feels like writing about it something that naturally occurs to him it is not compelled or it is not because he is going to sit and study about daffodils so it is intuitive and not an intellectual activity and it is nothing but a natural emotional reaction towards these daffodils that he feels like expressing his thoughts ideas and emotions are, you know about these daffodils so that is expression expression ennu parayunathu adu a natural emotional reaction aanu william wordsworth na daffodils ne kandappo manasil normally vanna chela feelings normally vanna chela emotions adu adeham ezhudan aagrahichu adu oru valare intuitive feeling aanu naturally vanna oru feeling aanu adu allanda adu oru intellectual activity alla ഞാനിരുന്ന് ഇനിയിപ്പം ഡാഫിഡിൽസിനെ കുറിച്ച് നല്ലപോലെ പഠിച്ച് അങ്ങനെ ഒരു കവിത അങ്ങ് എഴുതിയേക്കാം എന്ന് ചിന്തിച്ച് എഴുതിയതല്ല വളരെ കാഷ്വലി അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ മനസ്സിൽ വന്ന ചില ഇമോഷണൽ റിയാക്ഷൻസ് അതിന്റെ ബേസിസിലാണ് അദ്ദേഹം ഈ ഒരു പോയം എഴുതുന്നത് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻ ഇസ് എ നാച്ചുറൽ ഇമോഷണൽ റിയാക്ഷൻ ഇനി ഇദ്ദേഹം എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ ഒരു തോട്ട്സിനെ എക്സ്പ്രസ് ചെയ്യാൻ ആഗ്രഹിച്ചത് so william wordsworth he expressed about daffodils in the form of a poem so the method that he adopted was a poetic form pa deham ee oru thoughts ne express cheyan aagrahichathu oru poetinte roopathilana appa deham adopt cheyad method endayirunu poetic form ayirunu okay that is form appa idana expression of form inde artham ഇനി ഈ എക്സ്പ്രഷനും ഫോമും കൂടി ചേരുമ്പോഴാണ് എന്തുണ്ടാവുന്നത് ഒരു ആർട്ട് വർക്ക് ഉണ്ടാവുന്നത് സോ വെൻ എക്സ് വെൻ ദർ വെൻ എൻ ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റ് എക്സ്പ്രസസ് ഇസ് ഇമോഷൻസ് ഐഡിയാസ് തോട്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് ഫീലിങ്സ് ഇൻ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫോം ഇൻ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ സ്ട്രക്ചർ ദെൻ ഹി ക്രിയേറ്റ്സ് എൻ ആർട്ട് വർക്ക് ഓൺലി ദെൻ എൻ ആർട്ട് വർക്ക് ഇസ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് നൗ ഹിയർ ഹി ഓൾസോ ടോക്സ് അബൌട്ട് സെൻസിബിലിറ്റി സെൻസിബിലിറ്റി മീൻസ് when you look at a painting you have an instantaneous impression about it you instantly think that yes this painting is good or this painting is not that good you know it, it is kind of okay you know it it is bad or uh, it is good so that ability to decide whether a painting is good or bad whether an artwork is good or valuable is what we call as sensibility you know that ability to decide whether something is good or bad that is sensibility then what is aesthetic sensibility aesthetic sensibility is connected to art artworks that are expressed in the form of a structure when we look at an artwork and we decide whether it is good or bad that is the aesthetic sensibility that is that individuals possess an aesthetic sensibility to decide whether an artwork is good or bad is it clear okay that is now these are the ideas that are discussed in the ninth paragraph moving on to the 10th paragraph which is a bit important okay now what is the golden section the golden section in the parainada uh now see the golden section is also called as golden ratio okay um now it is just a term you know just like in maths how we say pythagoras theorem in, in a similar way it is just a term the golden section 
Now tell me how do you find the area of a square? How do you find the area of a square? It is a square, right? A square and a is the side of a square. If we have a square in the area, what is the formula? A square. That is the formula of the golden section. So, golden section is a geometrical law. Okay, it is a geometric law with fixed measurements. See, area of a square in the area of a square in the formula A square. There is no other formula for the area of square. That is a fixed formula. Similarly, when you are trying to create an artwork, the structure that you adopt when you you know it is sherikkum parna buildings and paintings are applicable so whenever you uh, it, basically the golden section is related to paintings and buildings uh, so whenever you are trying to paint a picture whenever you are trying to create an artistic building the greek philosophers uh, the greek artist and the greek philosophers believe that it must follow the golden section it must be built on the basis of the fixed measurements that are described in the golden section. Now, this golden section, it was treated with religious veneration. Religious veneration means with utmost respect. Just like how we respect God, this golden section was treated with great dignity. All right. So, one painting, one building, we will build it. What do we follow? In this golden section, we will follow the geometric law. We will follow the measurements of the formulae. Now, there were several writers and philosophers who did a study on the golden section. The golden section is a part of the writers and philosophers. For example, the German writer C. Singh. He said that the golden section is the key to all morphology in art and nature. Either artistic work at the Nokia alum, other than the structure left follow a pedana than a golden section. N on a German writer ceasing barnerik another. Okay, so ceasing says that if you take any artistic work, then its structure must follow the golden section, or the structure should have the main component as the golden section. And then there is this German philosopher and physicist Gustav Theodor Fechner who is the founder of experimental aesthetics. Now, he did an intensive research on golden section. He did an intensive research on golden section. Now, let me give you some of the examples of art that followed golden section. Like the pyramids of Egypt, the Egyptian pyramids. If you take the Egyptian pyramids, they actually follow the golden section. Now, it was actually found out after a great research that was done. So several artists and philosophers, writers, they studied golden section. Okay, and that's how they found that the pyramids of Egypt, the Gothic cathedral, the paintings of Pier, uh, Pier, Pier, Della Francisca, you know, they are all some painters' names. So you can just remember them. So the pyramids of Egypt, the Gothic cathedral, the paintings of Piero della Francisca, you know, all of these artworks, they followed, uh, uh, they, they actually followed uh, this golden section. All right. Now, uh, let me give you an example for this golden section. Okay. Uh, now, this is a rectangle. Right, this is a rectangle. Now, according to the golden section, according to the now, see here the geometrical harmony is nothing but the golden section. So, golden section is called in different names Go, golden section, golden ratio, geometrical harmony in this particular essay. Okay, so here essay la golden section, ne golden ratio item barayananda, geometrical harmony item barayananda. Okay. Now, what is the golden section? We will get a rectangle. So, according to the golden section, or according to this geometrical law of golden section, if a rectangle can be cut into a rectangle and a square, then, then it follows the golden ratio. Then it follows the golden section. So, a rectangle, we have a rectangle item, a square item cut the that is the golden section follow chain. 
സോ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഇതൊരു ഗോൾഡൻ റെക്റ്റാങ്കിൾ ആണ് ഓക്കെ ഇനി ഞാൻ കുറച്ച് എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് കാണിച്ചു തരാം ഈ ഗ്രീക്ക് രാജ്യങ്ങളിൽ ഉള്ള ബിൽഡിങ്സ് ഒക്കെ ഗോൾഡൻ സെക്ഷൻ യൂസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടാണ് ബിൽഡ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് സി ഇത് കണ്ടോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി പാർത്തിനൻ ഓഫ് ഗ്രീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഫോളോസ് ദി ഗോൾഡൻ സെക്ഷൻ ദെൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് മൊനാലിസ നോ മൊനാലിസ പെയിന്റിങ് ഓൾസോ ഫോളോസ് ദിസ് ഗോൾഡൻ റെക്റ്റാങ്കിൾ റൂൾ but then you know if we continuously follow this geometrical harmony or if we continuously follow this rule of golden section then all the buildings and all the paintings would appear the same right there won't be any sort of novelty in it there no novelty in it you know there won't be anything new to be said it won't be unique or creative so herbert reed says that there are certain limitations to this golden section for example if you take a poem like if, if we take the shakespearean era if we take the shakespearean era then shakespeare wrote how many sonnets how many sonnets did shakespeare write he wrote about 154 sonnets so when shakespeare wrote sonnets now what is a sonnet a sonnet is a 14 line poem varum 14 lines inde oru poem aanu sonnet ennu parayanathu so the correct pronunciation of poem is poem but you know i'm i'm still learning to adapt to that pronunciation so when you take a poem and if you take a sonnet then if everybody if everybody wrote a sonnet uh you know then like like right from shakespeare uh, to this modern era if everybody followed this uh, sonnet rule you know this rule of the sonnet of writing it in 14 lines uh, uh then and and then following that particular rhyme scheme won't it be boring won't we all get sick of reading sonnets won't we want something new that is human nature actually right we are ne- we are never satisfied with what we already have uh, you know or uh, right if uh, suppose namale ipo or aadi namaku or cycle a ullathu അല്ലെ ഒരു സൈക്കിളൊക്കെ കിട്ടി നമ്മൾ ഓടിച്ചു കഴിയുമ്പോഴത്തേനും പിന്നെ നമ്മൾ എന്ത് എന്ത് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നത് ഒരു സ്കൂട്ടർ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ബൈക്ക് ആയിരിക്കും ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നത് ഒരു ബൈക്കൊക്കെ കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാലും അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു അഡ്വാൻസ്ഡ് വേർഷൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു കാറായിരിക്കും ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നത് സോ ഒരിക്കലും ഒരു മനുഷ്യന് ഓൾറെഡി എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യത്തിൽ മാത്രം സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈഡ് ആയിട്ടിരിക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല ദി ഓൾവേസ് ക്രേവ് ഫോർ സംതിങ് ന്യൂ റൈറ്റ് സോ സിംപിൾ ഇസ് എ കേസ് യു നോ ലൈക്ക് വി ഓൾവേസ് ക്രേവ് ഫോർ സംതിങ് ന്യൂ so it is important you know like uh, and, and so that is the reason why geometrical harmony cannot be followed or golden section cannot be followed and he herbert reed is giving an example through the poems like if we follow just the rule of sonnet or if we just follow this uh, particular poetic rules then it won't be interesting we would get sick of it we would get tired of it so it is important that the poets they change the meters they change the rhythm of it you know only then it will have some newness only then it will have it it will have that uniqueness or creativity and it will be able to evoke a unique sense of pleasure within the readers so that is what he talks about poems and then he's giving an analysis uh, of a greek ways because these greek philosophers and artists they followed the golden section now he is giving an example that there was a an artist who was born in canada but he lived most of his life in america so his name was mr j hambage so mr j hambage he was a canadian born american artist now he analyzed a greek ways and he says that a greek ways now what is a ways nammal pookal okke ittu vekkina ways okay so in greek ways nagath uh, so what uh, mr j hambert says says is that now if you take a greek ways then it is perfectly made it has followed that geometric laws and it is perfectly made appo the greek ways golden section ubeyichittaan ee greek ways undaaki irikkunathu pakshe herbert reed parayunathu idu perfect aanengilum adu endana it appears cold and lifeless because all the greek ways is are made that perfectly and it doesn't it, it is not that appealing to the viewers 
And then Herbert Reed says that ഒരു രാജ്യത്തിലെ പോട്ടറി എടുത്ത് നോക്കിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഓക്കെ നമ്മൾ ഈ കളിമണ്ണ് കൊണ്ട് പോട്ട്സ് ഉണ്ടാക്കത്തില്ലേ ഇപ്പം ഇഫ് യു ടേക്ക് ദ ക്ലേ പോട്ട്സ് ഇപ്പൊ സപ്പോസ് ഞാൻ ഒരു ക്ലേ പോട്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കി ഓക്കെ ഇഫ് ഐ എം എ പോട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ഐ എം ഗോയിങ് ടു മേക്ക് എ ക്ലേ പോട്ട് വെൻ ഐ മേക്ക് എ ക്ലേ പോട്ട് വിൽ ഇറ്റ് ബി എ പെർഫെക്ട് വൺ നോ ഇറ്റ് വോൺ ബി എ പെർഫെക്ട് വൺ റൈറ്റ് it would have uh, certain imperfections but the pot that i made is unique nobody can make an exact pot like that even i cannot make an exact pot like that it would have slight variations right or exact image namaku create cheyan pattilla alleg or exact pot namaku create cheyan pattilla so whenever you make a pot or a pottery edukkaanengi എപ്പോഴും വളരെ അതിലെപ്പോഴും ഭയങ്കര റെഗുലർ ആൻഡ് പെർഫെക്റ്റ് ആയിരിക്കില്ല അതിൽ എന്തുണ്ടായിരിക്കും ഇറെഗുലാരിറ്റീസ് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും ഇംപെർഫെക്ഷൻസ് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഹാബിറ്റ് റീഡ് സെയ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ദോസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ആർട്ട് വർക്ക്സ് ആർ പ്യുർ ആർട്ട് ലൈക്ക് പോട്ടറി ഇസ് പ്യുർ ആർട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഹെർബർട്ട് റീഡ് ഇസ് സെയിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പ്യുർ ആർട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഹെർബർട്ട് റീഡ് സെയ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഗ്രീക്ക് വേസസ് ആർ പെർഫെക്റ്റ് but they are cold and lifeless but if you take the japanese pottery if you take japanese pots then they are irregularly shaped they are not perfect but they do have beauty in it they are beautiful that is what herbert reed says now in the 12th paragraph he talks about distortion distortion means nothing but a departure from regular geometrical harmony അപ്പൊ ഗ്രീക്ക് ഫിലോസഫേഴ്സും ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റും എല്ലാവരും ഗോൾഡൻ സെക്ഷൻ ആണ് ഫോളോ ചെയ്തിരുന്നത് അല്ലെ പക്ഷെ ഹെർബർട്ട് റീഡ് പറയുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ആ ഗോൾഡൻ സെക്ഷൻ മാത്രം ഫോളോ ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി ബോറിങ് അതുകൊണ്ട് എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം ദ ഷുഡ് ബി എ സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് ഡിസ്റ്റോഷൻ ഫ്രോം ഇറ്റ് നമ്മൾ അതിനകത്ത് നിന്ന് വി ഷുഡ് മൂവ് അവേ ഫ്രോം ഇറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റ് സംതിങ് ന്യൂ ക്രിയേറ്റ് സംതിങ് ക്രിയേറ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് യുനീക്ക് സോ ഹെർബർട്ട് റീഡ് പറയാണ് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഈ ഗ്രീക്ക് ആഫ്രഡൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് മീലോസിന്റെ സ്കൾച്ചർ എടുത്ത് നോക്കിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇഫ് യു കൺസിഡർ ദി സ്കൾച്ചർ ഓഫ് ഗ്രീക്ക് ആഫ്രഡൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് മീലോസ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ ഹാഡ് ഷോൺ യു ഇൻ ദ പ്രീവിയസ് വീഡിയോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പോസിബിൾ ടു ക്രിയേറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് സ്കൾച്ചർ പെർഫെക്ട്ലി നൗ ഇഫ് യു ടേക്ക് ദ ഫേസ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഗോഡ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഗോഡ് ഇസ് ഗ്രീക്ക് ആഫ്രഡൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് മീലോസ് ഇഫ് യു ടേക്ക് ഹർ ഫേസ് ദൻ വി ക്യാൻ മേക്ക് ഹർ ഐബ്രോ സ്ട്രേറ്റ് വി ക്യാൻ മേക്ക് ഹർ ഐ സ്ട്രേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ നോ സ്ട്രേറ്റ് her her face can be made in into a perfect oval shape her breast can be made into a perfect round shape but the thing is that what about the legs can you make the legs also in the straight line that would look very funny right you cannot actually create that sculpture's leg into straight into a straight line straight and erect is it possible no right the leg has certain bends and curves so you have to distort it you would have to distort that perfectionism you would have to depart from those regular geometrical laws and you would have to create an art with all its irregularities and imperfections so so that is what he is talking about distortion distortion means it is not it, it would have imperfections and irregularities now one of the best example of distortion is byzantine art now byzantine art uh, you know like uh, we saw the picture of we saw the painting of byzantine madonna now in that picture it is not a human figure right but it is just a symbolic representation of human figures it is a symbolic representation of virgin mary and jesus christ it doesn't look like virgin mary or jesus christ it doesn't even look like a human being or manushya roopathil alla adu srishtichirikkunnathu alle it is just a symbolic representation just an abstract idea so that is distortion reality il engena aanu irikkunnathu adu pole allatha oru figure nammal create cheyidu adu pole allatha oru figure nammal or artistic way il create cheyidirikkunnathu that is distortion okay so this video is a bit lengthy because uh, we spoke about this topic golden section which is very important okay so i hope it is clear to you now in the next video i'll try to shorten it as much as possible 
Uh, but because this video is a bit lengthy and uh, you know when I took this same lecture in college you know to my students uh, it took me like around I guess ar around four to five hours to finish this whole essay but I'm trying my maximum to shorten it and uh, you know like to sum it up at least within one and a half hours so thank you so much for watching now I'll meet you in the next video where I'll be talking about uh, the next paragraphs. So,